And be assured, Mr. Boone, if it was your intention to fire my imagination with your glowing account of the beauties of Kentucky, you have succeeded admirably. The prospect of resolving the land grant issue for the valiant men who served under me, coupled with a lifetime ambition to travel the trail you have blazed, prompts me to make plans for an immediate personal tour of inspection. Mr. President, as the man responsible for your safety and well-being, I not only disapprove of this journey, I I wondered how long it would take you to explode, Colonel. Uh, confound it, sir. How, how many times must you be reminded that the chief executive of these not two United States has inherited a large collection of enemies. Three attempts were made to assassinate you before the inauguration. Two have been tried since. This journey you propose is too great a risk. Kentucky is a wilderness. It was a wilderness, Colonel, until Boone opened the way for its colonization. As you are aware, he served under me before. I have the utmost faith in his loyalty, and I shall look forward to meeting this young frontiersman again. Now, where was I? Uh, prompts me to make plans for an immediate personal tour of inspection. Ah, yes. My aide, Colonel James Lamport, will be arriving at the fort two weeks from this date. I trust it will be convenient to meet with him and make arrangements for my journey over Boone's Trace, which I hopefully wish to make under your personal direction. With kindest regards, looking forward to our next meeting, I remain respectfully. Would you read that back to me, please, Mr. Portman? Dear Mr. Boone. In reply to your letter of the 21st. Pa! I am deeply... Pa! Is it true, Pa? Is it true, Pa? Is it real honest, true? It's what true? About President Washington. Ma says he's coming here to Kentucky. Well, that's what it says in the letter. You don't seem very excited about it. Well, ordinarily, I'd be real excited. But under the circumstances, I can't honestly say that I am. I don't understand, Pa. Well, neither do I. This letter from Mr. Washington is an answer to one I never wrote in the first place. First thing I'm going to ask Colonel Lamport when I see him. Supposing he doesn't have an answer, I'll just keep on going till I get to Mr. Washington himself. I don't like this, Daniel. I don't like it either. That's why I came looking for you. How many people know about this letter? Well, everybody in Boonesboro, except they don't know what's in it. Only Becky and the children know. Hmm. What does Becky make of it? About as much as you and I do. Either somebody made a mistake, or somebody didn't. Well, either way, the president's dependent on me. But you're not even sure that he's the one who wrote the letter. That signature could be a forgery. Well, the courier's credentials were in order. It was closed with the official seal. Well, those could be forged, too. This whole thing could be a trap, a ruse to lure you on some fool's errand. Thought about that too. You know what I think? What? This fish is much too salty. 
And you should know by now. You've already eaten six. <laughs> Thank you. Now tell me, Daniel, what can I do to help? I thought maybe you might like to come along. Well, the fishing isn't very good anyway. I would like the opportunity of meeting the president. Perhaps even of telling him that my people would like to be a part of this country's future, as well as its past. I'm sure Mr. Washington would be pleased to talk to you. to a letter you didn't write. In any event, I think we'd be safer traveling separately. That makes a lot of sense. Why don't you put all of our extra gear in this hollow log? Mm -hmm. Where will I meet you? Meet me at Clinch River. Maybe by then I'll have some answers for you. doesn't make good sense to me. It may to you, but all I know is I didn't write that letter to Mr. Washington. It does make sense, Mr. Boone. I should have known about it all along, except that up to now, I've had no reason to doubt the authenticity of your letter. I don't follow you. I warned the president not even to consider leaving New York, but as usual, he paid no attention. He uh, <laughs> can be a very stubborn man. I reckon it's lucky for the rest of us he is. Otherwise, we could have lost the war. Well, I'll tell him you said that, Mr. Boone. I'm sure it'll please him. But it isn't really an answer to our problem. I'm not sure I know what our problem is. Sir, isn't it quite obvious? There isn't a doubt in my mind that we're face to face with one more plot to assassinate Mr. Washington. You mean it's been tried before? Yes, several times. Oh, naturally, it's been kept quiet. But there is a certain group of men who seem almost dedicated to taking Mr. Washington's life. I can't imagine anybody wanting to kill George Washington. Loyalty, Mr. Boone, is a strange thing. There are people who think we still owe allegiance to the British. Do you know who any of these men are? Unfortunately, no. But the heads of this group are very clever men. That's why the president's letter was sent in your name. They are well aware of his interest in land grants for veterans and his fascination for the wilderness. They figured quite correctly that a letter from Daniel Boone would be delivered to the president in person. That's a part that doesn't seem real smart to me. 
They had to figure that the president would get suspicious when he found out I didn't write the letter. Well, they probably aren't aware of the president's personal affection for you. They failed to anticipate he'd answer the letter in person, and that is our good fortune. Yeah, I reckon it is. Now that you know what's going on, you can get on back to New York and make sure Mr. Washington stays put. On the contrary, Mr. Boone, the trip will take place as planned. Well, isn't that kind of like setting the president up as a target of a turkey shoot? You mean you don't see it? These people have no way of knowing that you got an answer to a letter you never wrote. They'll carry on just as planned. And that's our opportunity to destroy them once and forever. Seems like a pretty good chance to get the president shot, too. You don't think I'll take that risk? Mr. Washington won't be in the president's carriage. He'll be safely guarded at Mount Vernon, but only you and I will know that. Orderly! Have my horse saddled and brought around to the gate as soon as possible. Yes, sir. You will forgive my haste, Mr. Boone, but there are details to be taken care of, and I'll need your help. Speaking of help, Colonel, I've got a friend who knows the country as only an Indian can. His name is Mingo, mother Cherokee Indian, father British, educated at Oxford. You seem to know a lot about me and my friends, Colonel. The most important part of my job. Well, maybe you can tell me why somebody tried to kill Mingo on the way here. He was traveling with you? Up to a point. Then I assume he knows of Mr. Washington's projected journey to Kentucky. They read the letter. Well, that's most unfortunate, but I suppose it can't be helped. You have objections. Listen to me, Mr. Boone. One of the would-be assassins we took in a while back was a half-breed. Maybe that explains the attempt on Mingo's life. I don't like the word half-breed, Colonel. Neither do I, Mr. Boone. A man's origin has nothing to do with whether he's good or bad. We agree on that. But you can understand my hesitancy. Oh, I have no real objection, Mr. Boone. If only that I don't see his value on this preliminary trip. When the president does make the journey, his advice will be more than welcome. I mean, you'll be real pleased to hear that. What's this about a preliminary excursion? If you'll walk along with me, Mr. Boone, my horse should be ready by now. Due to the risks involved, I have thought it advisable to make a prior study of our intended route. In order to accomplish that, I've added several new men to my staff. For security reasons, only one of them will make himself known to you. That man is already on his way to Clinch River to work with you on preparations for the president's safety. Until my arrival, he will be in charge, unless you object to that arrangement. Well, there's no objections, Colonel. It sort of works a little outside of my line anyway. Good. He'll need your help in choosing campsites and plotting danger points along the way. Places where the carriage might be forced to stop and face an ambush. Well, how will I find this man? He'll find you. Here's a copy of his orders. He'll give you the original to identify himself along with his other credentials. Well, what if he asks me for my credentials? I hardly think you'll need them, Mr. Boone. There's only one of you in all Kentucky, and uh, if I may say so, you are rather unmistakable. Well, it's just one more question, Colonel. What if folks get curious about this trip? That possibility's already been considered. You'll simply be acting as a guide in a land survey. You have worked in that capacity before, I believe? Yes, sir. All right, then, until we meet again, a safe journey, Mr. Boone. Same to you, sir. Captain Edgar Newton.
credentials and a copy of his orders. Enough to convince Boone that he's dealing with the real Edgar Newton. May he rest in peace. Unless somebody in Clinch River knew him. Or knew Telford before. No, no, no. Newton came from up in New York State. Telford's been in England for the past ten years. I don't think anyone will notice a substitution. Sit down, Warren. You've walked at least ten miles since dark. Yeah, Newton should have been here long before this. So doesn't that bother you? Not especially. His horse could have gone lame, or he could have been delayed in some other way. Hmm. Or we could have chosen the wrong spot for the rendezvous. Yeah, since it was the same in both our orders, I don't think there's much chance of that. Now, have another drink. You'll be alone. You seem to forget we have a schedule to keep, and there's been small allowance made for error. There might have been a change in plans. In that case... <laughs> Allow me to congratulate you on your alertness, gentlemen. I could have killed you both easily. Give me a drink, John. At least I'm glad to see you both here on time. On time? We've been waiting here since noon. My horse apologizes. We've been traveling since morning. And we're not staying the night? No, Boone's due in Clinch River sometime tomorrow. I'm expected to meet him there. I'll saddle up then. No, no. The Colonel thinks it's better we travel separately and meet as strangers. You always had poor taste in rum, John, but I suppose it's warming. To your health, gentlemen. And to the death of Washington. Riding a far piece, stranger. Riding hard. Far and too fast. Oh, you take care of my horse for me. Yes, sir. How long you plan on staying? Well, overnight at least. You look like you could use a rest. Is there an inn in town where I could get some decent food and lodging? Well, the village inn is just up the street. Ain't really decent, but it's the only place in town. Thank you. By the way, would you happen to know a man named Daniel Boone? Daniel? You are a stranger around here, mister. Reckon ain't anybody in the whole territory don't know him. Well, do you know if he's here in town? Well, I ain't seen him. He ain't a man you could overlook real easy. Thank you. I beg your pardon. Uh, haven't we met before? That seems unlikely since I'm not in the habit of associating with savages. I'm sure I've seen you before. And I'm sure you should be taught some manners. We have no quarrel. Get that Indian! I'll teach you to insult a white man. Thanks to him. Would you like a free swing at him? That seems to be his style of fight. Excuse me, sir. I think there's been a slight misunderstanding. You're sure of it. Now, you better get out of here, mister. He may not want to swing at you, but I'm real tempted. I believe I heard him call you Daniel. Your last name happened to be Boone? Could be. I'm afraid I owe you and your friend an apology, sir. This whole affair was entirely my fault. It's unfortunate we had to meet this way, but uh, perhaps the whole incident can be forgotten. For our mutual advantage. My name is Edgar Newton. Edgar Newton? Since what we have to discuss is confidential, I would prefer to find somewhere more private. If you'll meet me tonight in the tap room, I'll be happy to show you a copy of my credentials and my orders. Perhaps that will suffice to convince you. That's too easy, Daniel. Well, he's one of Colonel Lamport's aides. 
I'm supposed to guide him over the trace in preparation for the president's arrival. Oh. In that case, I'm afraid I owe you an apology. Eh, uh, what for? Well, by defending me, I'm afraid you've made an enemy. I don't know, Daniel. I... Somehow, I... I just don't trust you, Mr. Newton. I can't say that I blame you. Well... Where are you going? Back where I belong? Well, why should I stay here? Don't tell me I've been invited on your little scouting expedition. Well, you weren't exactly invited, but Colonel Lampert said he didn't object to your going along. Well, that's very kind of the Colonel, but uh, I don't think I'd like to travel with Mr. Newton. Let this be your expedition. One thing between us that's settled. Now, about this afternoon's unfortunate affair. I trust this won't affect your enthusiasm for this mission, Mr. Boone. I was asked to work with you. I don't have to like you. At least you're on his side, my that. As long as you and I know where we stand, we can get along. But as for your savage friend, Mingo. Fortunately, I don't like Indians. Very sound and personal reasons. I've apologized for what took place, but your friend appears to be a little arrogant. Before you go any further, Mr. Newton, I think you should know that Colonel Lamport has given his permission for Mingo to come along. Surely you can't be serious. I can't believe he'd trust the safety of the President of the United States to... You can believe it, Mr. Newton. I didn't even know the Colonel had been consulted on this matter. Or that your Indian knew what our plans were. Well, in the circumstances, I suppose I'm compelled to respect the judgment of my superiors. I can't say I look forward to the pleasure of traveling with your Mingo. Mr. Newton, he felt the same way about you. He's already gone. Gone? Gone where? Back to his tribe, maybe. Gone hunting, he didn't say. I'm not sure I like that. You're a hard man to please. First, you're unhappy because he's with us, and now you're unhappy because he's gone. This was supposed to be a secret mission, Mr. Boone. It appears it's no longer secret. You don't have to worry about Mango. I'm going to turn in. I've arranged for horses and supplies. If it's agreeable to you, we'll leave it sun up. It's agreeable. find out. Nothing we didn't know before, except the Indian's gone. I could have told you that before. We saw him leave shortly before sunup. Which direction was he headed? West. And get after him. At this time of night? At this time of night, he can't have traveled far. I don't see what harm he can do. He knew me in London. Not very well, fortunately, but given enough time, he might remember me. Can't take a chance like that. Where do we go then? You find me on the trail, we leave it, son of. What do we do with the Indian when we find him? Just what you were told to do before. Only this time, don't miss.
So careless of me, huh? Making all that smoke? Well, he's got no reason to think anyone's looking after him. Could be a trap. Let's go see, huh? Yeah. Sure you hit him. Saw him fall, didn't you? Yeah, but I don't see any sign of him now. Well, he's drifting with the current. Now stop worrying. I never missed an easy target like that. Well, now that was real thoughtful of him. I think coffee ready for us. Don't you think we ought to go back and report this? Putin said he and Boone were due to leave at sunup. Should put him here sometime around noon. All we got to do is wait. speaking, this is the beginning of the trace. One direction takes you into Charleston, the other through the gap. Well, according to my chart, that puts us 65 or 70 miles from our destination. I'd say that was close. Are you sure the president's coach can travel this wilderness without getting trapped in swamp or underbrush? Well, it's not exactly a post road, but it's passable. How long do you think the trip will take? Two days, fast traveling. Circumstances, I think fast traveling might be advisable. Uh huh. Our only problem is to find the places where he might be vulnerable to attack and to pick a campsite for an overnight stop. I'd be glad to mark those on a map, save you trouble in taking the trip. There's no offense intended, Mr. Boom, but I prefer to see them for myself. I am responsible for their safety. How many will be in the military escort for Mr. Washington? Four cavalry troopers and a driver. Four troopers? It was Colonel Lampert's idea. He felt that a larger troop might attract attention. Well, if it was me, I'd swap a little attention for a few more men. But you're getting Colonel Lampert and myself. Also the men who are working under me. And how many is that? I'd prefer to keep that a secret, Mr. Boone, even from you. Shall we proceed? assassination, Mr. Newton. But if I was going to ambush somebody on this trail, this is a spot I'd pick. I'm inclined to agree with you, Mr. Boone. All a man would have to do is push a rock up there, down on the road, and sit back and take pot shots at anything that moved. No room down here for a team to turn and run. How does this road run through the gorge? Not more than a quarter of a mile. But that's far enough. You can rest assured, Mr. Boone, I'll keep this place in mind. Sergeant Post, you mean? Oh, 
Good evening, sir. Is there something I can do for you? Uh, yes. Have you a Captain Edgar Newton lodging here? I'm Colonel Lamport. Colonel, I've been expecting you. Captain Newton left at daybreak along with Daniel Boone. Ah, well, then I expect he gave you certain instructions prior to leaving. That he did, sir. He told me to clear the house and close the tap room for the night. There's no one here except me. Very good. President, your lodgings are ready. Stand at ease. General Washington. Oh, Mr. President, I, I never thought I'd have the honor. Hey, Colonel Lampo tells me you served under me throughout the war. It's always a pleasure to greet an old comrade at arms. I presume you have my lodgings ready? Oh, uh, yes, sir. I'll dine in my rooms. It would be my pleasure if you join me, Colonel. I am afraid I must ask to be excused, sir. I'd planned to ride ahead and join Captain Newton. I'm anxious to see that he's taken all necessary precautions. I'm flattered by your solicitude for my safety, Colonel. You really deserve a rest. But then you never were one to take your duties lightly. Thank you, sir. Then I'll join you tomorrow somewhere along the trace. Very well. Convey my best regards to Mr. Boone. Say I look forward to our meeting. Yes, sir. Good night. And now, my genial host. If you'll follow me, sir. So this is the spot you've chosen for our overnight stop. It's about halfway to where we're going. It's as safe a place as I know offhand. The bluff back behind us that protects us from above. There's only one way to get in. I can see all that, Mr. Boone. I'm not objecting to your choice. Expecting someone? No, I just thought it was rather late. Perhaps we should get some sleep. I'm willing. Before we do, why don't you call your dogs in? What do you mean by that? There have been two men tailing us since noon. Since they're no friends of mine, I figured they belong to you. You're a very observant man, Mr. Boone. The reports of your woodsmanship were not exaggerated. John, Morney, come on down. Added precaution. If something happened to me, there'd be someone else to carry on. I'd like to meet my two trusted aides. This is the great Daniel Boone. We've met. That we have. The Boone has been suspicious of me for some time. I am up, John. Lingo was right about you after all. He said he thought you two had met before. I was afraid he'd recognize me. I tried to kill him yesterday. I trust you caught up with the Indian this time. Early this morning. There's no cause for worry now. We had to be eliminated, Mr. Boone. He knew too much. I hate to interfere with your pleasure. Mr. Washington is expecting me to meet him. If I'm not there, I'm sure there'll be some questions asked. I doubt there'll be any questions asked. You see, contrary to what you think, Washington is not at Mount Vernon. He's due to leave Clinch River sometime before dawn. You've done away with Colonel Lamport, too. Let's just say Colonel Lamport is in good hands. Tie his feet as well, John. I don't think he'll cause us any further trouble. I'll tie him up, John, and I suggest this time you gag him. I don't think anyone will be traveling this road tonight, but we can't afford to take chances. Or not leave him. For the present, yes. It's important that the stage is set properly. Tomorrow he'll be found at the scene of the assassination, having died bravely in the defense of Washington. I'll bring up the horses, Warney. Yeah. 
I'm sure you prefer to die a hero, Mr. Boone. It would be my pleasure to give you that opportunity. They got you too. But you were dead. This is about as close as I care to come. Just sit there and don't try to move. What does all this mean, Daniel? It means we've been tricked. Washington's going to leave Clinch River in the morning. They're going to kill him on the road. What about Newton? He just baked for me, and I was fool enough to take it. Clean shirts and brandy. How many were involved in the conspiracy? Well, there's Newton. Two more that I know of. They're the ones that ambushed you. There's probably more. Washington has four troopers in his escort. It's all my fault. I never should have lost my temper and left you. If, if I had stayed, I... Sooner or later, I would have remembered Newton, and we would have been on our guard. You remember him? Yes, now that it's too late. I met him at the Royal Military Academy in London, and his name wasn't Newton then. Yeah, take a sip on this. <clears throat> this may burn a little. <clears throat> it stains a little bit, don't it? Oh, it's not the pain, Daniel. It's, it just seems a waste of good brandy. back. Get back? From where? Clinch River. I've got to stop that coach. Well, that's, that's almost 30 miles from here. We, we better hurry, Daniel. The sun will be up in a few hours. Where is this ambush to take place? I guess it'd be the Rocky Gorge. I'm afraid I laid it out for Newton. Not much time. Don't waste any more time here with me. I'll be fine. What about you? What if, if you run into them on the way? Well, 
think I'm still tied up here. That'll be my advantage, just in case one of them comes back. Is there anything else you want? I just want you to be on your way, Daniel. Godspeed. Going with that confounded knife, you're getting on my nerves. I beg your pardon. It's not every day I wait around to murder a president. A man's got to get used to that. And I object to your use of the word murder. Call it anything you want. It all comes down to the same thing. You're not thinking of getting out, are you, Morney? Because I assure you it's much too late. I didn't say that. I just said I didn't like the waiting. No, there's any of us. Make it about a mile. You and Morty better get to your post. Yes, sir. Now, just shoot straight and want those two advance guards down and don't block the road too soon. The end of a long period of planning. And the realization of a dream. Good luck to both of us.
out, Daniel. How did you get here? If you could run 30 miles, I could walk three. I'm the president, I, I trust he's safe. If you think you can walk a few feet further, you might ask him. He's standing right over there by the coach. You mean to say he came with you? First in peace, first in war. He's a mighty stubborn man. Quite sure you're all right, Joseph. My congratulations, Mr. Boone, to you and your friend. And my eternal gratitude. I owe my life to both of you. I reckon the whole country owes its life to you, sir. No more than to the other men who fought and died for it. Well, now, it seems I shall be seeing Kentucky after all. Yes, sir. Your friend seems to be wounded, Mr. Boone. Would you both consent to completing the journey in my carriage as my guests? Mingo, you wanted to powwow with the president. Here's your chance. Thank you, Mr. President. I think I'd better stay and do what has to be done. I'll join you later on, sir. Hey. and bloody ground. What a harsh phrase for such a peaceful countryside. The land has seen much fighting. And will see much more before there's an end to it. But there will be an end to it. Not in my lifetime. Perhaps not in yours. But someday there'll be an end to this bloodshed. How do the Cherokee feel about it, Mingo? The Cherokee are a proud race, Mr. President. At first, they fought against the whites. But our chief is a wise man. He no longer lives in dreams, but he's learned to live with reality. He knows that we must live together in peace or forever be driven from our lands. The choice is obvious. And tragic, in a way. But there's no help for that. If all the tribes felt as you do, the problem would be simpler. Many lives that will be forfeit could be saved. It has ever been thus. And ever will be. The country is young. There is nowhere to go but to the west. Perhaps someday we'll even cross the Mississippi and move on to the westward from there. The people will fight. As long as man is greedy and the land offers wealth, they will be fighting. But enough of this. I came here to see if this country is suitable for land grants and to enjoy myself during my brief stay. There'll be grief enough when I return without borrowing from the future. You know, I envy you and your friend Daniel. Envy? Us? I envy you your freedom your leisure, your time for hunting and fishing, for enjoying your life. I wish I could share it with you. Even for a few days? Even for a few days. I think that might be arranged, Mr. President. I was on a fishing trip when I started this journey. The fish is still there. It's a splendid way to see the country. An excellent idea, Mingo. I should have thought of it myself. Now, that's one promise I intend to hold you to. 